whatever it takes. Today on Film Learning, I thought we might revisit a classic effect. You know, before Endgame. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learning good. And we're just on the eve of Endgame. I'm sure some of you have seen it, some of you haven't, and some of you are staying completely off the internet, like me, until you do see it. But I thought, why not visit our most popular tutorial ever and give it a little bit of a shine on, you know, a little bit of an upgrade. I am of course talking about our Iron Man HUD effect. So this particular Iron Man HUD effect is based on the Infinity War iteration where the close-ups on Tony's face were a lot tighter and the depth of field was a lot shallower so all those HUD parts on screen weren't as overwhelming and you just focused on Tony's face. Now before we jump into the effect, I just want to give a big shout out to the channel VDO DNA. He actually posted an Iron Man HUD effect two years ago and I only just saw it last week and I thought to myself, that is an ingenious way of tracking the HUD. I've been wanting to update my Iron Man HUD effect and this is exactly how I'd like to do it. So guys, I highly recommend checking out Video DNA's Iron Man HUD effect tutorial where he builds the entire thing from scratch. It'll be up in the card and it'll also be down in the description and hey, I might even put it on the end screen. Now in order to complete this effect, it's really pretty damn simple. First off, you gotta head to filmlearner.com slash downloads and grab our Iron Man HUD effects pack. You'll also need to shoot your actor doing their thing either on a green screen or a dark background in a pretty decent close up. Now one thing I will recommend is guys, don't move your head around too much. If you actually watch Infinity War, Tony Stark barely moves his head at all. Now if you've got all that, let's get to work shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and here is our new Iron Man HUD template. This one's based on the Infinity War HUD template where the focus was a lot narrower. So you can't see a lot of what's going on and I think that's a good thing because it actually gives a lot more focus to the actor in the scene. Now this tutorial is going to be short gang because this is super easy to work with. As you can see, when you open up the project file, you are greeted with my big nose mug as a default example video. So in order to introduce your own footage and have all of the HUD track with your face, it's gonna be pretty simple. All we have to do is open this comp marked face. In here, you'll blah, see my original footage, my face. Now let's drag and drop some footage of my son in here. And from there, We'll size it up so he fits in frame and is pretty much in the exact same position as our example footage is. Now since his facial features are a tad smaller than mine, you know, like my gigantic nose, we need him to be a little bit smaller than me in the frame to help the tracker actually define his face. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can always check back and forth between the final comp and this one to make sure that your head is within the bounds of this tracking mask, this one right here. Since I'm happy with that, I'm gonna turn off my example layer and head into the final comp. Now here's the magical part, gang. We only have like three steps and we're done. First, head to our face comp, hit MM to bring up the mask path settings, making sure you're on the first frame of the comp. Hit the stopwatch to remove our previous animation. Done. Next, we wanna right click on the mask and select track mask. We'll then head over here to the tracker settings and set it to facial tracking with detailed features if it isn't already and then we're going to hit the play button. And done. From there we want to set a rest pose. This frame is a pretty good example of a rest pose gang. He's looking directly at camera and his mouth is shut. So let's hit rest pose and then we'll hit extract facial measurements. Excellent. Now you can see that our HUD has compensated for the new face and is pointing down at the moment. And that looks a little bit off. And that's because basically it's a vastly different head that's right there and we need to compensate for that. So to do that, we need to come to this null object called head. This is what defines where the center of the head is in our comp. So what we wanna do is adjust this point until it sits in the center of our actor or your son's head, in my case. And as you can see, as I've moved that into position, our HUD is now properly centered as well. Now, as far as our HUD goes, guys, our work here is done, gang. 
I'm serious. The HUD will now follow your head movements without any issue as long as you don't start headbanging. I mean, if it can follow a three-year-old, which they don't sit still at all, it's got you covered. The other two steps are just cherries on top, guys. Then that's really just adding reflections of the HUD in our eyes. To do that is pretty simple. Firstly, we want to add two null objects, one and two. From there, we want to select our face mask, head to Effect, Boris Effects, and grab Mocha AE. Click on the logo and we'll launch it. From there, we want to track both eyes, gang. So grab your X spline and draw a quick mask around the eye, like so. Set the amount here to 90%, turn off shear, and hit that play button. Nice, that one's done. We'll now repeat this for the other eye and bam, both of our eyes are tracked. Let's then name each of our tracks, right eye and left eye. Let's then save and head back to After Effects. Oh, welcome back. Let's now parent that tracking data to our null objects. But before we do that, let's just quickly name these nulls right eye and left eye just to avoid some confusion. Click Create Track Data, select our right eye, head down, set the export data to Transform, and set our export to our right eye null. Hit Apply Export and BAM! That tracking data is now pasted onto a null object which is tracked to our right eye. We'll then repeat those steps for the left eye. Click Create Track Data, select our left eye track, head down, set it to Transform, select the left eye null, hit Apply, and we now have both eyes tracked to null objects. Then it's just a matter of grabbing both of these icons that contain just reflections of our HUD pieces, parenting them to our newly tracked nulls. There we go. We're going to adjust them into place so they sit on top of the eyeball, and if you need to, you can adjust the mask so they sit properly in there. And there we go. Obviously, we're going to repeat that process with the left eye. We're going to parent it to the null, and we'll adjust it into place. Done. And guess what? That's it. Let's check out a preview, shall we? Awesome. It's all done, moves great, and that took no time at all. Now gang, while the tutorial is over, I just wanted to talk about the comp itself and how you can adjust some things in here, because it is really easy to adjust as well. For example, the uh, widescreen bars, you can easily turn them on and off. That's totally up to you, totally your preference. Now you can also go down to here, we've got some light fall off, which is basically just this cast light that's coming off the holograms. If I turn that on and off, you can see it's pretty subtle but it's there if you want to adjust it. You can adjust the density if you want it a bit more harsh. I think it looks pretty good the way it is, but once again, totally up to you. The other one we've got here is just a camera lens blur just to soften the sides of the actor's face, just to sell that illusion that this is working in a very shallow depth of field. Now our next one is a pretty important one and that's our color grade. All this is is a photo filter and a brightness and contrast setting. If you want to adjust how harsh that is, you can just lower the opacity and you'll find it comes back a bit more. I, for one, I'm going to keep that as it is. But if you want to up the density of the photo filter or you want to, say, bring the contrast back down a little bit, totally up to you guys. Now, the other thing you can do, and this is a personal preference, you can also adjust the position of both sides of the HUD. So, say you want this to come up a little bit, just move it up in 3D space, you're not going to screw up the track at all. If you want it to actually be in focus, just move the Z space further towards the actor's face and you'll find that it's starting to come into focus a lot more. And same with the left side. If you're not happy with that position, you can easily move that up and if you like, you can move it forward in Z space and the closer you bring it to the actor's face, the more in focus it is going to be. Now you can also open these up and change things out if you really want to. Say I don't want Iron Man in there and I want say a wireframe of Thanos, I can easily just hold the Alt key, drop in Thanos and our comp will auto update. But guys, I highly encourage you to have a play with all the settings here, play with the color correction, add your own color correction, do whatever you want and make it your own. But for now guys, that is another effect. 
done. Out of all those steps, you can get something like this. Today on Film Learning, I thought we might revisit a classic effect. You know, before Endgame. So there you have it guys, that's my updated take on an Iron Man HUD effect. As you can see guys, this thing is super easy to work with. I replace my face with my son's face in the space of about five minutes and everything works just fine. And once again, this is all possible thanks to Video DNA's fantastic tutorial on how to set up the tracking. But I think that's gonna do it for me guys. I'm gonna head to Endgame in a couple of hours, so I better get ready for that. If you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button, guys. I really do appreciate it, and it does help that. And leave a comment below if you want to request an effect. And hey, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button below, and make sure you turn those notifications on so you don't miss a single Film Learn episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've got all my social media stuff over here, as well as the Patreon if you want to support the channel. Or as always, guys, you can click that link below that says join to support the channel directly in YouTube. There's also some merch down there if you want to check that out. But until I see you again, guys, keep learning.